Hickok 45 here, and it's a target rich environment. Good day to have a 10 millimeter, huh? Yeah, 1911. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't hurt to have a 1911 in 10 millimeter so that you can address a target rich environment. Like right there. Whoa, look at it. <laughs> I did that on purpose. I knew it would splash him. Pretty nice. Let's just wake up the gong. With the last round. How did I know? Did I count my rounds? Not really. Yeah, this is the Ronin, the uh, Ronin Operator Springfield Armory in 10 millimeter, relatively new as you're watching this and as I'm shooting it. The, this is, yeah, the Ronin Operator. It's the uh, uh, Springfield Armory Ronin in 10 millimeter. And so far I've shot it a fair amount, not too much. You know, no one has an overabundance of ammo, of course, these days, but uh, I, it has not malfunctioned yet. And it is a sweet shooter. You know, it's got plenty of heft to it. You know, it's got a forged uh, stainless frame, a forged steel slide, and cold hammer forged barrel. It, it's a, what you would consider generally a quality 1911, I think. And uh, I think it just MSRP is like 850 bucks. So I'm not sure what you could actually get it for, probably around eight. But well, I don't know. We're in uh, you know firearms Armageddon right now. But uh, in in normal times. It's uh, very reasonably priced for what it is, seems to me. Okay, so so those were some just standard 10 millimeter. I've got some uh, gold dots loaded up over here in the third magazine. So let's try these. These are defensive gold dot. All right. And I saved a two liter with a gold dot. Boom, that blew it up. <laughs> nice. I'm gonna take out a buffalo with this gold dot. I think it's uh, it's what the pioneers used, wasn't it? Spear gold dot, federal premium. Yeah, see, works. How about a ram? Yep, <laughs> got a pig, scared the pig down. If those had not been hollow points, probably wouldn't have gotten them, right? But it killed them. Just enough expansion. And if you believe that, you must be new to shooting. Let's, uh, let's put another one of these on the gong. All right. Let's try that big old square, ugly red plate. I jerked the trigger on that first one. Let's, uh, let's, well, I've got one or two of these left. One. <laughs> I have one left, you know how I can tell? Yeah, pretty smart, huh? Uh, I'm gonna put him on uh, the tree here and see if he'll knock that arm around. Yep, 10 millimeter does it. <laughs> All right, so that was a joke. The hollow points make no difference on steel, right? Not that I would know of. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, this is the uh, the Ronin, and it comes with uh, one magazine, okay, and that's it. I bought a couple of magazines. You heard me talk about that in the uh, Sunday shoot-around uh, uh, last, well, you know, who knows what last week means to you right now, or me, right? <laughs> well, it does mean it to me, but to you, you might be watching this in 2028, you know, so last week is really... A long time ago, right? But anyway, I mentioned having ordered a couple. But these are mine. I'm going to keep them because I might end up with a 10 millimeter 1911. You never know. Or we review another one or something. So I'm sorry. Uh, this comes with one magazine. That's not my fault. Complain to Springfield. It comes with one magazine. And that's what uh, this goes back to Bud's with. One mag, okay? <laughs> and uh, so, uh, yeah, it would have been nice if it had a couple of mags. And uh, I'll load up a variety of stuff here and uh, yak at you a little bit and uh, we'll shoot a little bit more. Uh, the thing it feels good. It has a nice trigger. It's about, I don't know, three, three to four pounds. Really nice break. Yeah, it, it just, it's, it's perfect for me. I, I like it. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's got uh, the things you want on a 1911. If it's a, 
I say that if you want uh, some of the enhancements that make them better shooters and more comfortable, all that, you know, there's a big, there's a difference between your standard GI, which I love, you all know that, uh, should have had one of those on the table maybe, but once you, uh, you buy a modern one that you want to shoot a lot maybe or even compete with, it's just really nice to have the checkering. Well, they don't have it on the front strap, but you got some checkering here. You got this uh, really good high ride, uh, you know, grip safety with the memory bump on it. Okay, that's handy sometimes. I'll talk about that. And it does not have ambi safeties, which of course I prefer. Uh, the other one's just in my way. And if I get disabled in this arm or something, and I have to finish out the gunfight with with my left hand. I think I can figure out how to get the safety off. Yeah, I think I can. But, uh, so anyway, uh, I prefer that. Maybe some of you would rather have that. If you are left-handed, of course, you'd, you'd rather have the this thumb safety over here, I would imagine, right? And probably not have one on this side if you're left-handed. If I were left-handed, that would be my preference. But a lot of people like ambi safeties. Um, so the memory bump, now the memory bump, again, I think I've explained this to y'all once or twice before. If you have large hands, that is really a nice feature because if you like to lay your hand up on the safety, you're in a potential combat situation, you got your hand up there ready to pop that safety off, you pop it off and have to shoot, well, if you have that memory bump, it's more likely to disengage the safety. For me, as you heard me talk about recently with, maybe recently with uh, the Dan Wesson Vigil, I think it was. Uh, I don't, uh, it doesn't have the memory bump. And if I lay my thumb up on the safety like that and I want to shoot it, just pop it off and bang without moving my thumb, it, it, it won't always disengage the safety. So that extra little bump there helps a lot with me. So uh, I just spent 12 minutes talking about that, sorry. So yeah, nice trigger. It's, it seems well made. It's a pretty gun. It's very purdy, isn't it? You got your serrations, your front serrations, which I rarely use. I just, I, the big old hands like mine, I just don't like to have them out there around in front of the muzzle that much. A lot of people, you can do it. I just, I just grab it back here, however I'm going to do it, mostly. But you do have the front serrations. You do not have front serrations. Boy, it'd be nice if it had serrations there. Of course, what do you want for 800 bucks? You know, that's a that doesn't, uh, checkering doesn't come uh, cheap. Uh, you know, just a pretty nice gun. It, it really, I'm impressed because a Colt and, and uh, numerous others are gonna cost more than this. This is 10 millimeter. Wow, got your three dot kind of sights, fiber optic up there. And your little shelf there for your tactical, you know, operation if you need to. So just a pretty nice gun, uh, 1911. <clears throat> and 10, 10 millimeter. This sort of configuration, as I've said before, it's, it's kind of an ideal configuration for a firearm that is not just a stock GI gun. If you're going to put some things on a firearm that really make it a, a better shooter for you and feel better for you, you know, the beaver tail and uh, that kind of, the, the flat mainspring housing most people kind of like, including me, and, uh, you know, good sights. So. This makes it a really good shooting. Now this, yeah, these hold nine, these ones I got for, these are trip research, I think, yeah. Uh, Cobra Mag, Cobra Mag, that's where I got it, trip research. But uh, it's actually a nine round mag. This is an eight round mag, okay? So, and these, I haven't shot these much, but they uh, seem to work okay. Seem to have the same follower or a similar follower to a Wilson Combat uh, magazine which I always like, because those are extremely reliable. Yeah. So that one seemed to have a little trouble taking that ninth round. This one didn't. You know, doesn't matter, you don't, get, you don't get these anyway, okay? <laughs> and what do we want to load in this third one this time? Some trophy bonded. Let's put some of these babies in there. Bruisers, okay? Now these have an interesting shaped bullet. Sometimes uh, uh, a slide, I know when I was firing some of these in rehearsal, <laughs> yeah, right, re rehearsed. Now, I fired a couple of these the other day. One of them kind of caused the slide to hang up or the slide lock. Either is that or me. It could have been just a recoil from, from them. I don't know. And I hit my thumb on the slide lock. Okay. So we'll try those too. All right. And then I won't keep you too late. Uh, mainly, again, if you know 1911s, that's what this is in 10 millimeter. And, you know, it's got the standard uh, GI 
uh, you know, spring and plunger and everything, which I like. I do not like, as you know, uh, full length guide rods and all that configuration. Uh, they just are not worth the uh, extra hassle to me at all in terms of accuracy. And if they're not more accurate or something or make you shoot a whole lot better, why fool with it? Feels good. Uh, just a nice trigger, like a good feel to it. If you like 1911s at all, you would like this this pistol, I think. Uh, how about a pig over there? A pig right in the middle of the field. Just appears to me to need a bullet. Yeah, I knew it. I knew he did. Uh-oh. These pots need a little smoking, too. <laughs> <laughs> all right feels really good let's put this hotter stuff in let's put a couple of these on the tree oh yeah so i either hit the slide lock or that bullet design i'll make sure i keep my thumb down But <laughs> it knocked it over. <laughs> Boom. So maybe it was me. Maybe it was me. I, I always just swear that it wasn't me when that happens. Because I, I, I don't know. Maybe it was. I'm going to hit the cowboy with one of these bruisers. <laughs> yeah, you can tell a little more recoil. But, you know, it doesn't hurt. Uh, you got a nice uh, beaver tail grip, feels good, and uh, just just very very pleasant pleasant to shoot. I think you could shoot that all day with any power factor or ammo. I got some hot underwood stuff in. It I haven't tried, but you know it just feels fine uh, with hot ammo or light ammo. Sights seem to be right on, and I guess I was hitting my my thumb up on that, causing the slide lock to engage, perhaps, you know, because when I uh, I sort of changed my grip to make sure I didn't do it, which was actually an awkward grip for me, I rarely use when I'm in firefights, uh, and it didn't happen. So, I don't know. You'd think I would know better by now, wouldn't you? So, uh, you know, price-wise, we've talked about, and uh, what the thing is made of is just standard... Uh, uh, 1911 GI mainspring uh, operation and just a pretty nice gun and we'll probably bring it out and maybe uh, do something else with it just while we have it 10 millimeter is really uh, coming on strong again I think everybody makes a 10 millimeter it seems like and uh, some good ones and uh, that that uh, market the industry has matured to where we know now how to make a, a 1911 10 millimeter that won't fall apart on us, right? Early on, we had some problems with that. I say we, you know, the firearms industry, <laughs> like I'm part of it, right? So uh, I have not made a firearm in my life, I have to confess. So yeah, pretty cool gun. It's a pretty gun and uh, a good shooter. I've enjoyed having it and we'll, we'll shoot it some more. We might uh, dream up something else to do with it, okay? I'm glad y'all came out today and, uh, and you know, enjoyed uh, some shooting. I hope you did. Life is good. Oh, fire. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh, man. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips. So go check them out. Also, Ballastall. They're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So Ballastol, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also, I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J-O-H-N underscore H-I-C-K-O-K-4-5 on Instagram. 
And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.